In the last few weeks, Apple announced that they have seen 10 billion downloads onto their mobile platforms, whether it's the iPhone or the iPad. We could well see another 10 billion downloads over the next few months and another 20 billion in the following year and so on. So what's going on? What's powering it? Well, it's a coalition between two interests. On the one hand, the individual is looking for things which are simple uh, to, uh, when the web is actually quite complicated. But on the other hand, providers of services are also uh, very much attracted to these apps because it allows them to deliver information without the individual going anywhere near a search engine, and in particular, Google. Why is that such a challenge? Well, if someone types in, let's say, the Hilton Hotel into Google, they may well be presented with a host of different things which are outside of the Hilton Group uh, to be able to manage. And some of those may be uh, sites like TripAdvisor with community comments and so on. But if there's an iPhone app for booking your hotel rooms with the Hilton Group, then the experience for the customer is tightly controlled and the entire environment for the customer is then managed appropriately according to the business interests of the group itself. So it's the combination, therefore, of customer and provider that creates this incredible growth. And the other thing is the very low cost of entry. It can cost maybe 5,000 or 10,000 euros at the absolute most to develop really quite a nice app. And if you promote it well, it could well be at the top of the charts within a very short period of time, uh, just because 5,000 people have downloaded it as a result of your own networking. Uh, and you can make it free, if you wish, in order to give your app a head start and then uh, offer the opportunity to upgrade with a, a relatively low-cost, uh, mass-market, uh, low-featured option, and then even upgrade to a higher option later. So apps are here to stay, but the question is, how will these apps actually be used? Because some users now have maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50 of these things and the actual daily use of each individual app is of critical importance to the people who provide them. Now it's one thing if you've just sold the app in order to make your money, uh, but most apps are sold with a different purpose. They're sold in order to pr promote a product to create a brand, uh, to cross-sell other things, to uh, engage with customers and get hold of names and addresses as people register for the product, and so on. So there are all kinds of complicated agendas here, which mean that app builders are going to have to think hard in future. How are you going to compete for a slice of that desktop space, of that iPhone space, uh, in the future when it's such a crowded area? And the answer is, by constantly innovating, building new features, second generation, third generation apps, which exploit to the very uttermost the characteristics and potential of the machine on which the app is running, and stream continuously into a wide range of other formats uh, and, and, uh, and content, which is seamlessly integrated into that app from the web. And that is the future.